You probably never realized this, but the evil ones are always around you. That merciless devil and his many disciples of evil, wrath, and despair. They follow us throughout our lives waiting for opportunities to break us spiritually and emotionally. They will come to you during your weakest moments when your mind is quiet and open to their influence. Filling your mind with torture and suffering. Long gone are the old days of demonic possessions and hearing bumps in the night. Now they play an insidious long game with each of us to collect our souls. This haunting tale my friends is called Frozen with Fear. It is about two young men named Tommy and Chase. Let's hear all about their story. When it came to his character, Tommy had everything in this world. He was charming, intelligent, and loving to everything around him. But he also lived with Down Syndrome. A barrier that hid his true beauty from the strangers of the world. Throughout most of his life Tommy never knew of the struggles most people had to face living with Down Syndrome every day. You see Tommy came from a wonderful family and a very supportive community. His mother and father were beloved physicians in a small affluent town in the Northeast United States. They were the perfect parents to raise a young boy like Tommy. His mother was outwardly kind and compassionate to all. She was like a mother to almost everyone she met. Tommy's father was also very kind like his mother. He was outgoing with a charming nature that attracted people to him. This loving environment helped mold Tommy into the incredible young man he would later become. Growing up, the children of the town were always very accepting of Tommy's appearance and unique manner of speaking. He never really experienced any awkwardness or uncomfortableness growing up. He was loved in his small town from a very young age. Growing up Tommy's house was always full of the neighborhood kids and his friends from school. It was hard not to feel welcomed and cared for when you entered that home. And for his best friend Chase, Tommy always made him feel like he was a part of their family. Chase's parents were equally as successful as Tommy's parents, but only when it came to making money. Chase's father owned several restaurants and his mother did the evening news for a local television station. Needless to say there was not a lot of time made for raising Chase. Before meeting Tommy, Chase spent most of his childhood at home and alone. This loneliness is a very dangerous thing, as it allows the horrible darkness to find you. And for poor Chase the darkness found him at a very young age. The devil loves nothing more than a lonely child needing love and attention. You see children are very vulnerable and it is easy for him to control them. Throughout our lives we have been led to believe that the devil is some type of monstrous demon living in hell. Actually he is quite the opposite. The devil lives within all of us. He speaks to us in our minds as a supportive and comforting voice. He sounds like our own inner voice and subtly guides us down a wrong path that you never would have chosen for yourself. It is his chosen disciples that you really need to fear though. They are ruthless when it comes to their attack on your mind and soul. They are hateful, dark, and worst of all, insidious. From a very young age these demons would torture Chase about not being loved by his parents or anyone else. They would tell him that the world would always despise him. For Chase this was a pain that he carried until the day he tragically died. Tommy and Chase really did meet by chance. Chase's family moved to Tommy's neighborhood when he was only 5 years old. Being the new kid, Chase would just sit in his front yard and watch the kids of the neighborhood play together. He would daydream about being friends with the other kids. Chase wasn't a shy kid but he lacked the social skills to approach the other kids. This was partially due to his parents not being around and also due to the torment he endured when he was alone. From a young age, every night as Chase tried to fall asleep the dark presence would enter his room. He would try to hide from this dark form that would terrorize him throughout the night but it was always there. This demon would swirl around his room as he would quietly cry out in the night for his parents but they were not there. This dark presence would fill his mind with thoughts of being alone forever constantly telling him that he would never be loved. 
that summer the devil lured Chase down to the neighborhood pool. Day after day Chase would see all of the kids walking past his house to the neighborhood pool. Chase wanted desperately to impress the kids even though he didn't know how to swim. The devil pleaded with him day after day that the only way he would be accepted was if he would dive into the pool. The devil's voice sounded so much like Chase's own inner voice he really began to believe he could do it. When Chase arrived at the pool that day he went straight for the diving board. He was sure he could do this. The devil had him convinced that he would be loved by all the kids if he would just jump into the water. Nervously, Chase stepped up to the diving board. In that moment every second felt like a lifetime. All he had to do was jump in, kick his feet, and pull himself up with his arms. Behind him another kid started yelling at him to hurry up as he also wanted to jump in the pool. Chase looked around, and all of the neighborhood kids were staring back at him. The devil broke his silence and commanded Chase to jump in the pool and he did. As Chase went under the water he realized what a mistake this really was, and panic instantly set in. His arms and legs began to flail violently as he tried his hardest to get back to the surface. He screamed with terror as the oxygen in his lungs was quickly running out. Utterly terrified, he felt like he was about to die. Suddenly he felt an arm wrap around his waist and he could feel he was being pulled out of the water. It was one of the neighborhood kids Tommy. Chase had seen him around the neighborhood but they had never met before. Although Chase was embarrassed, freezing, and shaken up, he was forever grateful that Tommy saved him that day. Over that summer Tommy and Chase became the best of friends. Tommy and his parents were quick to welcome Chase into their home and also their family. From a young age Chase spent almost all of his time with Tommy at his home. Tommy's home became an escape for Chase. Chase could feel the love and acceptance he got as soon as he walked through the door. It was also an escape from the demons that would haunt him when he was alone in his parents' home. The demons were not able to hurt Chase when he was at Tommy's house. One of the main things the boys bonded over was their love of Christmas. Chase basically spent the entirety of the holidays at Tommy's, as Chase's own parents worked right through the Christmas vacation. A fond memory that Chase carried throughout his life was one special Christmas Eve that he spent at Tommy's house. Chase would reminisce about the Christmas Eve, where Tommy and himself were excitedly looking out the window awaiting Santa, when the beautiful snow began to blanket their town. He remembered how Christmas carols were playing in the background and the tree was decorated just perfectly. The street lights reflected the snow in the most beautiful way. Before anyone could stop him, Tommy ran out from the house in his bare feet without his jacket on. Tommy stood in the middle of the street with his arms raised above him, ever so slowly he spun in circles, enjoying every second of the snow falling. Tommy always became impulsive and playful when he was this happy. Chase quickly ran out to join him, bringing Tommy his shoes and his coat. It was one of those moments that stick with someone for the rest of their lives. Over the years the boys changed and grew but the one thing that remained the same was their friendship. These two boys were inseparable. Tommy and Chase were the best of friends through grade school, then middle school and finally high school. Graduation was special for these two young men and their families. It was actually special for their entire community. Despite Tommy's Down syndrome he was chosen to be the valedictorian of his high school graduation. He earned this though through his hard work and determination. There was no question throughout the school or their little town. Tommy truly was a special young man. His grades were at the top of his graduating class. His attitude and his love for life were infectious to all those people he met in his town over the years. During his speech at graduation, Tommy spoke about how in life you can accomplish anything if you have the right support around you. He talked about the love his parents had for him and how much it meant to him to have a friend like Chase. That happiness for Chase and Tommy carried into the summer as both of the boys got accepted into the same college. They were going to get an apartment together and spend most of that summer daydreaming about going off to college. That first day of college was a very different experience for both of Tommy and Chase. 
They were in the city now, and outside of the comforts afforded to children living in a small affluent town. They and each other though, they were lucky enough to be living together throughout their first year of college. For Chase, the experience of the first semester was easier. He had finally found a place where he was instantly accepted. He was quick to make new friends and was thriving in this new environment. Chase was spending more time going out with his new friends than he did at the school. Tommy on the other hand struggled throughout the first semester. He was in a new environment and for the first time in his life he could feel he was being treated differently. His Down syndrome became a focal point for all of the strangers around him. It was incredibly difficult for Tommy to meet new people and make friends now. Believe me that he tried to make friends. He could sense that they just couldn't see past his appearance. Any interaction he would have with strangers came with an unnatural hesitation from them. This awkward hesitation would tear at his heart and leave him feeling an incredible sadness. He could see in their eyes that they were trying to figure out how they should deal with him. Or even worse how they should get away from him. More than anything in this world Tommy hated this awkward hesitation. Tommy did the worst thing he could have done at this time. He turned inward and began spending all of his time outside of school in his room. He was able to maintain his grades, but mentally he was not doing well at all. Now, even his interactions were brief with Chase. Their friendship was falling apart and for the most part it was pretty much over. As soon as Tommy got home from school he would go straight past Chase and his new friends and head directly to his room. When he was alone in his room and battling depression Tommy found a new friend. The devil would wait for Tommy to get home before he would start his daily assault on him. He would be at his most tired, stressed, and open to the devil's most diabolical persuasions. In an endless loop the devil would replay in Tommy's mind the pain he suffered at the hands of those strangers. It was torture for Tommy to have this replaying over and over again in his mind. Hours would pass with Tommy sitting in his room as the devil filled his mind with resentment for the outside world. The devil's evil minions would take over later in the night and continue their assault on Tommy as he tried to sleep. These demons would fill poor Tommy's mind with heartbreaking thoughts about why those people rejected his friendship. Thoughts like this are something no one should have to endure. This evil dark presence took great pleasure in torturing Tommy night after night. If Tommy was lucky enough to fall asleep during these attacks these demons would then abruptly wake him up in a panic at 3 a.m. This made Tommy's heart race with anxiety, they would continue to torture his subconscious for hours leaving him exhausted and less able to function the next day. Tommy never felt more alone and more insecure than he did during his first semester of college. So quickly the devil was able to erase all of the love Tommy felt growing up as a child. But things were about to change. Christmas was fast approaching and the boys were busy with exams. Tommy's parents were going to be there the next day to pick the boys up and take them home for the Christmas vacation. Arriving home from his last exam, Tommy was surprised to see it was just Chase alone at the apartment. He was just sitting on the couch watching television. Tommy joined him on the couch and the boys began to talk and have fun for the first time in what seemed like months. For Tommy it felt like old times again. He was happy as Chase would be spending the holidays with him and his family again. Unfortunately a knock at the door interrupted their fun. It was Mike and Tim, Chase's new friends. They came to get Chase for one more night out before the holidays. Tommy began walking to his room. Chase stopped Tommy and asked him to go out with them to celebrate the end of the semester. Tommy was never a drinker and really felt uncomfortable about going out. But he didn't want to hurt Chase's feelings or be alone in his room again for another night of torment. The devil was also inside of Tommy's head working on his subconscious. He made him feel that this was the only way that Chase and him would ever be close friends again. Tommy gave in to the pressure and agreed to go out with them. That night turned out to be a lot of fun for Tommy. He really needed this. As the boys were walking home after a long night, snow began to fall from the sky above. 
It was the first snow of the season and Tommy became excited. Partially about the fun night he had had and also about the beauty of the snow falling from above. Impulsively Tommy ran out onto the frozen river and extended his arms out. He began to spin slowly as the beauty of the snow caught the light just perfectly. He closed his eyes and let the snow fall on him. This moment brought him back to that Christmas Eve with Chase when he was at his happiest. Chase quickly yelled at Tommy to get off the ice as the other boys began to laugh. Within seconds of Chase yelling at Tommy, a loud crash was heard as the ice began to break. Chase, Michael, and Tim watched as Tommy fell into the freezing cold water and instantly disappeared from sight. Only a second later Tommy popped back up from the freezing water with a loud gasp and a cry for Chase's help. Tommy extended his arms towards Chase and his eyes were filled with pure terror. Tommy cried out again for Chase to help him as he clawed at the ice to try and pull himself out. Michael and Tim erupted with laughter as they did not realize the imminent danger Tommy was in. Chase was about to lunge on to the ice when he heard a familiar voice command him to stop. He feared this voice more than anything. It was the devil. The dark force that spent so many years inside his head tormenting him as a young child. Chase stood there completely frozen with fear. He was forced to watch as his best friend was pleading with him for help. The devil began filling Chase's mind with the memories of when he almost drowned as a child at the pool. Chase wanted desperately to save his friend but was unable to move. Tommy's heart broke as he desperately tried to get Chase to help him and he just stood there with his new friends who were laughing at him. For Tommy, the last thing he saw was the look of hesitation on Chase's face that he despised so much. Only a moment later Tommy disappeared from sight. He was really gone. Michael and Tim quickly left the shore after trying to snap Chase out of his state of shock. Chase stayed at the shore in total disbelief about what just happened. The police, fire department, and ambulance eventually arrived at the scene and took Chase into the back seat of a police car. He didn't say a word as his whole world had just fallen apart. Within a couple hours Tommy's parents arrived at the police station. And shortly after Tommy's lifeless body was recovered from further down the river. Even at their worst moment Tommy's parents tried to comfort Chase despite their own shock and grieving. Chase was like a son to them. He was all they had left now. To say this Christmas was hard would be an understatement. It devastated the entire town where the boys were raised. Everyone was mourning the loss of their son Tommy. He had brought so much hope to the community during his graduation. It was Christmas Eve, when the police investigation concluded and revealed the details of what happened that tragic night. Video footage was recovered from a nearby business showing Michael and Tim laughing as Chase stood by watching Tommy pleading for his life. Although the boys were never charged, a path of devastation was carved out through each of their lives. As you can imagine the coming days and months were not kind to Chase. Chase was never charged with Tommy's death but he was convicted of murder by everyone who loved him. Tommy's parents' marriage fell apart shortly after Tommy's death. The tragedy of their son's passing was too much for them. Both of them left that town and the memories that haunted them there. Chase's parents lost everything after the news broke about Tommy's final minutes. His parents sacrificed everything to be successful and it was gone in an instant. If only they had invested some of their time into Chase when he was young. Chase's life spiraled completely out of control after Tommy's death. His mind was trapped him in a cycle of depression and self-loathing that he could never escape. The demons from his childhood found him again and never relented after Tommy's death. In the end his demons were right. Chase was never loved after Tommy's death and he took his life when he was all alone in this world. And the devil got what he had wanted all along. Another community full of hopeless souls that he could easily prey upon.